So heart failure is extremely prevalent and we're seeing more and more of it in our aging populations. There's two, I tend to split heart failure into two types. There's the traditional type of heart failure, which people suffer after sustaining a heart attack. And that's where there's impairment of the main pumping chamber of the heart. Um, but increasingly, we're seeing patients with what we call preserved uh, heart pumping functions and heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. And that tends to be older patients that have um, developed a stiff heart through the processes of aging. Uh, things such as high blood pressure can contribute to this. And this is the kind of heart failure that is uh, has multiple causes um, and is really a disease process of aging populations. So we're seeing more and more patients with heart failure um, of both types, to be honest, um, but probably more of heart failure in patients with, you know, uh, who are aging, who have got multiple medical conditions that are contributing to their heart failure. So the majority of patients will present with symptoms of shortness of breath, which is usually the principal uh, symptom of heart failure. Patients can uh, present with swelling of the ankles, uh, shortness of breath on exertion, uh, shortness of breath lying flat, or even wake up gasping uh, and gasping for their breath in the middle of the night. Um, heart failure does present in subtler ways. So patients uh, may have more insidious uh, features such as, uh, again, it would be principally a shortness of breath uh, would be the main feature or, or subtle swelling of the uh, of the ankles. There aren't always symptoms of heart failure. And occasionally we pick up patients whereby they have, for example, an abnormal ECG. And then we go on to have a look at their heart using imaging tests. And we find that there's an impairment of the heart pumping function. Um, so not everyone who has an impairment of the heart pumping function, has clinical features of heart failure. So it's really a mixed bag. So there are numerous causes of heart failure. The majority of patients with uh, impairment of the heart pumping function have had a heart attack in the past and cardiovascular disease is one of the biggest killers in Western civilization. Uh, so a lot of patients develop heart failure following a heart attack. There are inherited forms of uh, disease of the heart muscle, which can cause impairment of the heart pumping function leading to heart failure. And they are probably the, the second um, group of patients that we see in, with reduced ejection fraction heart failure. So impairment of the heart pumping function. The other subset of patients are um, patients with preserved heart pumping function and they tend to be patients with lots of medical problems. Uh, and this is principally thought of as a uh, aging heart failure where the heart gets stiffer and is unable to uh, take in as much blood when it relaxes. And that can lead to a clinical syndrome of heart failure. So in some instances, instances heart failure um, can be significantly improved. It might be there is a temporary uh, underlying medical condition that is causing heart failure. And by treating that underlying medical condition, uh, you get rid of the heart failure. Um, examples of that might be a, a thyroid-induced heart failure or, or uh, something like anemia that's causing a heart failure. So by correcting that underlying cause, you can cure the heart failure to a certain extent. There are certain forms of heart failure, however, that are not curable, and that might include patients that have sustained a heart attack or patients that have a inherited uh, cardiomyopathy disease of the heart muscle or patients that have got a uh, stiff heart and a, a heart that's been exposed to the aging process, you know, and things like hypertension, high blood pressure. Um, in that kind of patient, you know, heart failure is a chronic condition and our therapy will be tailored towards controlling that condition. Um, and the aim of the game for me is to get patients to be able to live their life as they want to without the burden of symptoms and without uh, the need of coming in and out of hospital regularly. And that in a certain subset of patients will be the aim of the game. So 
So lifestyle uh, amendments and changes are absolutely fundamental uh, to longevity and a key component, component of heart failure treatment. Often when we go and see consultants, uh, uh, especially cardiologists for heart failure, there's a primary focus on medication and medication is, you know, the linchpin of heart failure treatment. However, exercise, dietary change is also a key component of, of treatment. And for me, this has been borne out with recent studies that have suggested that a new type of medication called uh, a SGLT2 inhibitor, which is principally an anti-diabetic drug, but has recently been proven to be very, very beneficial for heart failure patients. Now that works in reducing the exposure to the heart of glucose. Um, and that has been demonstrated to reduce uh, heart failure admissions and reduce symptoms and improve quality of life for patients. So for me, that underpins the need to concentrate on dietary change and improving exercise. And one of the things I often say to my patients, if you don't use it, you lose it. Um, so for me, maintaining mobility and increasing exercise within recommended guidelines is absolutely fundamental to longevity and heart failure treatment.